don't forget that this tutorial is part of a series of tutorials which you can access on our YouTube playlist or alternatively if you would like to you can purchase the whole course on Udemy there should be a link to the YouTube playlist and a link to our Udemy course which should always provide the best price in the video description now that we have expanded our database we have some more tables that we need to determine the relationships between those tables and the existing tables so let's take a look at the new tables and how they might relate to the existing tables right to simplify this there is a relationship between product line and attribute so product lines will have attributes like i explained in the previous tutorial instead of putting all the attributes in this table which is really unrealistic there might be thousands of them for each product we're going to generate some kind of generic attributes which we can associate the product lines to so we only have to type out or define maybe attributes once so color is color for everything um, the weight is weight for all types of products so it's very generic the type of attributes that we're going to add in here now this might not work for everything but this isn't necessarily uh, meant to be designed for that but we're just trying to generalize and build a general set of tables for a general scenario so let's think about the relationship between product line and attribute okay so we're going to find that if we so let's start with the attribute side so for one attribute so one attribute might be associated with multiple product lines so color that could be associated with a whole bunch of different product lines so a one-to-many relationship between attribute and the product line. So for one product line, how many attributes it might have in the attribute table? Well, many. So we have a one-to-many from product line to attribute. So remember the rules. Now looking at the column individually, moving downwards. So in attribute, we have a one and M. So that resolves to M. So if there's an M in either the first or second column of us filled in the column, then it's always going to resolve to many. So you can see both sides is the same. And that resolves then to a final relationship of a many to many between these two tables. Let's do the same with the product. So we are going to associate, or we are going to say that the product is associated or related to the product type. When we define a new product, we're going to define the fact that is going to be related to a particular product type. So that might be clothes, that might be shoes, that could be in this case because we have parents. Um, field where we might have sub types um, stored in the product type um, that could be absolutely anything so let's go back and have a look at the relationship there this relationship isn't necessarily as clear as some other relationships and it can just resolve depending on your certain scenario maybe what you're going to sell the type of data that's going to be inserted into the database but I'm going to make the assumption here and say that the product for one product it might be associated or will be associated eventually or some products might be associated to many product types and therefore one product type will also be related to multiple products so that will also resolve in a many-to-many -many relationship so to actually now apply that into our diagram there is a question that remains where should we define a many-to-many -many relationship should it go on the attribute end or should it be the product line end with this relationship? Now, uh, there's a few ways for you to think. And um, I, just to kind of generalize this, I would try and look at it in this way. Can the attribute exist on its own? Yes, it can. So we can have an attribute name color. It exists nicely. Uh, there's not a problem there. So can we build a product line um, on its own? Uh, yes, we can. But it's reliant on adding additional information which is going to be in the attribute table so that we can say that the product line table is reliant if you like or dependent sorry on uh, the attribute table to provide more data so because the product line is dependent on the attribute we're going to add the many to many uh, reference here in the product line table so let's call this um, at attribute for now okay so that's our many to many uh, field there defined in the product line table 
So we can do the same thing with product and product type. So product type can, can exist on its own. It is not dependent upon any other data. It is what it is. All the data is in the product type table, whereas the product table is dependent on the product type because we needed to define that for a product. So let's add the many to many right over here. And then we call this uh, type. We'll just call this type. Okay. 